Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the studio this evening. And on tonight's program. <laughs> uh, tonight, we'll be doing some more of this hair around here. Uh, we're getting close to it being dark enough there. I still need to get a lot darker around the, uh, the big shadow here. Uh, and blend it in a little bit more. Uh, so I'm just trying to get rid of any odd cat hairs on here because if I catch them with a power graph tool, it stinks terrible. Um, I am more and more coming to the conclusion that I don't want to make the background dark. Whether or not I actually want to put a little darkness behind him, I don't know. Which would then allow me to leave the... Um, the chin and the other side of the, the muzzle clear, uh, white as it is. Uh, or I may just apply some pyrography in there. I might do that. But anyway, for the moment it's more hair. Not more hair, more hair. So, light them up. Or heat them up. Um, I did adjust this the uh, connector on this pen so hopefully last night so hopefully it will react better uh, tonight and hmm. let me bring this light down a little bit without getting too much glare from the there we go let's try that I could do with sort of just side lights maybe pointing in but I ain't got no. It is something that I intended which is why I actually have the snake, uh, well two snakes where the cameras are actually, or one of the cameras is connected to, uh, was to, uh, to construct uh, two, two lighting rigs basically, a couple of LED spotlights, something like a couple of uh, 5 watt units um, for airbrushing so I could use the, um, the snakes and just sort of point them around the easel uh, and point the, the light towards the artwork. Uh, at the moment I've not done that and I am um, of course using one of them for the camera so but maybe tomorrow I can stop using it for that purpose because hopefully some of the uh, uh, like a, a pantograph style light uh, or pantograph style it's unit which in this case has a microphone uh, connect on the end of it uh, will do the job instead of the snake it actually should be a bit better but uh, it might be a bit easier for me to use but we shall have to see about that then I may well be able to construct the lights but I don't really need them a great deal generally speaking just for some reason this one just is I'm getting a lot of shadow off my hand today uh, same yesterday I hadn't noticed it before I don't know why I'm just working around this shadow now. 
to effectively blend the shadow more into the fur. It's a bit hard edged. So I need to reduce that hard edge a bit around this area here. That's fine. Um, but this is sort of a bit of a nondescript shadow. You can't really see why it's there. So I'm going to try and do a bit of work on that. Okay, that's now darkening out quite nicely. We've got a sort of secondary, secondary um, shadow occurring there. to do is to do some more work now around in this sort of area here just to start to emphasize why the shadows there a little bit or well, that it's it's just the shape of the mane Although were I to recreate this put this uh, image again, I'd leave that bit of the shadow out. The ear? Yes. This bit? Nah. Probably not include that.
Ultimate Dibba, good evening. Nakmui. Uh, I'm assuming then, therefore, as opposed to being just um, somebody's name, that actually um, is a has a meaning. Like night music, for example. I don't know, but um, no idea. But good evening and welcome back. Am I saying it correctly? <laughs> or am I saying it so wrong it's funny? <laughs> Night mouse in, in Dutch. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, moose, moose. Ah, okay. I shall have to mention that one of, to one of my colleagues who is um, who is actually Dutch. I pull it, and no doubt I'll be talking tomorrow. Oh, I see. So, in other words, don't mention it to him. Okay. It's uh, it's meant to be um, derogatory in some way. I take it then. Hmm. <laughs> okay, fair enough. We can't learn every language in the world. Nachmui. Okay. It sounds a bit Scottish when I say it like that. One more time. Now. Now that you've told me that it, it's bad, I'm not sure I want to continue to do it. <laughs> I think if I was going to learn a language... Um, I think I was going to learn a language from the continent. It, it would probably be Danish for some reason. I did learn a little bit of Danish at one point. Not that I can remember much of it now. But uh, I did start to learn some Danish. <laughs> it's not bad. Now then, you see, you've... You're stuck with the dilemma now, you see, because you've kind of sort of suggested it's wrong. And yet you want me to say it and uh, I can only go so far. Um, it's a world language. I mean, I think, um, isn't it, uh, Chinese is spoken by more people. Uh, French. But in a very localised area, French is reasonably uh, a wide area, and English being things like pilots and an and international language in that respect. Pilots all must speak English, for example, that does all air traffic control. Um, that does tend to make it uh, wide, widely known. I think the, one of the things is that those people such as potentially, well yourself I assume, who learn English as a second language, practice it. They continue to practice it throughout your life. I mean, they, they mentioned the, uh, a colleague that I work with, he is uh, Dutch and he his English is flawless. He, he speaks 
you know, when I'm speaking to him, he's speaking English um, because of the way in which our firm operates. He talks to a lot of my colleagues in England um, all, all day, every day in English as his second language. And um, I find it absolutely amazing. I guess I guess I could I could cheat and say I actually know quite a lot more languages, but um, uh, not many of them are spoken. You know, basic C sixty five or two assembler <laughs> for a little bit of Fortran. Um, I know a lot of those, um, but I also know Morse code as a language. Uh, Bass. Bass. I wouldn't have thought that. Hmm. I mean that for, for if I said it how you intended me to say it, that would be what I would have thought most people in England would say it as. Um, it's it's very close. Um, bass. Um, some people might, I guess, say bass uh, because B A W -S, S, uh, as in bass drums, or you know, we'd probably say bass for B A W -S, S, but bass for the single S. Uh, I wouldn't bother saying the rest. <laughs> um. Or is, or is it intended to be more sort of baz? Dutch, English, German, French fries. <laughs> that, was a that was a nice placement of that one. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's probably more something like freeze rather than fries, but um, uh, and a little bit of Japanese. There you are, you see. Um, I... At one time, in theory, when I was at school, I could speak some German, some French, um, some English. <laughs> I speak. Uh, you could. At one time, I also sp uh, spoke a little Yorkshire. Um, um, on the first one. What the the Nakmui or the the bass? Uh, hmm. I don't know why, in particular. I mean, I, I, I guess it's you know, um, like like my colleague is 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 Vansig, um, which I know a lot of people in the UK pronounce uh, would pronounce it as Wansink. <laughs> Um, and he kind of he kind of said, "How did you know to say that the way I said it?" Because it, I don't, I assume it's close, but not quite exactly how it's it's said over there. And I actually don't know. I mean, the German, of course, the the W is a V, um, and I know that's got an influence in quite a few of the languages. So, on the bass, okay. It just seemed natural to me, to be honest, uh, Ultimate Tiber, um, to say it that way. Vansink. Or, or, or Van, uh, Vansig, I think I pronounced it. Um, but uh, W A N S I N K. That's his family name, not his, um, not his given name. No, uh, S I N K, N for November, K Kilo. But when I the way I, when the way I normally pronounce it within his hearing is um, is with a very soft N. It's almost it's almost it's almost not there. Yeah, that's how it's spelled.
I don't know if it's if, if it's because I have um, for some reason it just seemed the right way to pronounce it uh, Vansic hmm? or maybe his family I don't know his history to be honest I may well ask him one of these days. No, you're right. It, it isn't. Um, it's his first name is as would be as common. Well, it's probably. I, I know he isn't American. I don't think his family is, but it, his first name would probably be more common in, in America than anywhere else. But of course, that could just be his his parents like the sound of it. You know, my hair won't sit down properly. Mm. What do I do in my spare time other than drawing? Um, <laughs> this is about all the spare time I get, Ultimate Tiba. Um, it is what you see here. I, I, outside of this, if at the moment, is... Um, well, quite literally outside of this at the moment is, is sodding out stuff to do with a new studio. But... Um, the uh, apart from that, um, I keep, well, I, uh, there's a few people I follow on YouTube that I I keep up with on a daily basis or regular daily basis. So I spend about an hour or so watching videos. Um, but I I finish work at five o'clock. By the time I've had my tea, that's half past six. If I watch an hour of video, um, I'm then just about the start of, of the stream. So. We're into uh, two hours of streaming till 10 o'clock at night. Not a lot of other time left. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it, most, of, most of the things like this, um, you know, this, th this is sort of me doing art on a daily basis and you guys just happen to come along for the ride and watch it. Um, whether it's art or whether it's jewellery or something like that. Um, uh, and my weekends, as I say, this at the moment is just all tied up with the new studio work. So uh, once that's uh, once that's settled down a bit, I don't actually know what I do. Probably some of the other crafts um, that are not very easy to do on uh, on the stream at the moment, like airbrushing or something like that. But uh, no, it's it's um, pretty boring at the moment, to be honest. I play the odd game when I uh, when I get tired of doing things.
<laughs> what kind of job do I? I work in telecommunications. Uh, and I deal with lots of numbers. So, um, data and statistics handling mainly. Um, it's all associated with products. How well they're doing, uh, how well they're not doing, um, trends and things like that. Nothing at all to do with art unless you um, look upon the um, manipulation of numbers as being a creative activity, which um, I admit sometimes it perhaps is. <laughs> I don't mind doing it. It's a, it's it's a nice enough job. It's a fun job to do. I get um, I get to uh, shall I say more or less decide what I do for myself. Um, how I do it, more or less when I do it is entirely up to me type of thing. Um, and it's, when you're looking for things with numbers and data and statistics, it's quite good fun. It's I enjoy. Um, adventure games, exploration adventure games uh, and in some ways sort of the work that I do finding trends in numbers or just spotting odd things in them it's kind of like adventure games you go down a path to see what's down there and it gives you a hint of something somewhere else and you then start having to work your way how to get to the somewhere else uh, and I find it quite uh, fascinating it's really hard to describe they're exactly what I do do uh, you know it's you kind of have to understand the whole context of everything to kind of understand my job as as, as such but uh, yeah just uh, manipulation of numbers and, and data handling So when I start streaming, it's a completely different thing. No, that's a, that's a game I haven't heard. No, that's good. That is that. Um, there's. I'm just wondering if uh, there's a is, is, is whether whether that's I, I take it this is a big multi-user uh, multi-user game, and I'm wondering um, there's one like that which I've, I've watched but haven't played, and I'm trying to think of what it's called. And it may well be it's just we just have different names for the same same thing. Um, I didn't know it had planets to explore as such, but you had planets that you could go to. Uh, and the space stations that you trade uh, in or you, you know, pirate ships or things 
Uh, I'm trying to think what it's called. I keep wanting to think Infinity, but it's not. Um... Oh, my brain isn't working today. But yes, possibly. Elder Lech, good evening and welcome. Um, the thing with the thing with sort of um, exploration in terms of things like adventure games is you've got um, I say thirty hours. That's a big uh, playing field. Um, with some with some games, um, there almost needs to be a purpose to to it um, or progression to it. Uh, with the adventure games, you've got a you've got a purpose. You're you're looking for something. You're trying to solve a puzzle, etc. So that you know you're hopping all over the place. Um, the the closest you get to a game, I guess that has no purpose, is something like Minecraft, um, where there is really no purpose. You can do whatever you like in there. Um, there is the end and the ender dragon but you kill the ender dragon that's not the end you know you've been to the end and you just carry on so um but it's it's the building in there so i'm, I'm guessing you know if you're buying your spaceships the idea of course is to start small and uh, buy more and buy more and so on until uh, and bigger ones and and things so yeah, i'll have a look Purpose is to make it to the centre of the universe. Oh, okay. I'll take a look. I um, I tend not to uh, start new games that often, uh, just purely because I've got a fair few still to play. So I, <laughs> I tend to um, uh, these days I don't I don't uh, at one time I did you know things like when I generally use the consoles quite a bit. Uh, I, I'd oh I'd go into a, a shop and go that looks an interesting game that looks fun to play I'll buy that. Um, and I, well, I've given away big cardboard boxes full of games that I've never even opened. So these days I don't, I don't play them. I, so I don't buy them unless I really want to play them. And generally speaking, I'll have watched somebody, somebody else play uh, for quite some time, and <laughs> and then um, you know looked at it and thought, hey, that looks interesting, and and watch them see how it develops and things like that before I actually go to the point of saying, okay, I'll pay some money uh, and have a go. And of course, some of the games then um, you've seen how it's done, so it's not worth buying. <laughs> but uh, I'll take a look. Uh, well. Um, it might well be a possibility. I, I, I not no, I've no real intent or so sort of specific desire to to stream games uh, Ultimate Tiba, but um, I, 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 I was about to say I did try once not so long ago because I had Junior laid on me, uh, and in such a way that I couldn't really do any pyrography or anything, and um, I didn't really want to disturb him. He doesn't sit on you that often. It's kind of nice when he does, and you don't want him to get up. Actually, Felix is the same. Um, so I, was, I tried playing Factorio on stream. The only thing was, um, it, will, it wouldn't it, it wouldn't run properly uh, because I'd updated it to Windows 10, and the version that I had uh, gave screen corruption. I needed to update to an alpha version. Um, so I never, I never even got to do that on stream. But by the time we finished messing about trying to make that work, Junior got off, so I did some pyrography instead. Uh, 
But what makes it worth um, paying to watch Ultimate Tiba? My reaction. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that makes me wonder whether I'm actually going to like such a game, the Ultimate Tea. But if you're, if you're um, willing to, willing to pay to watch my reaction to it. You'd buy me the get. Hmm. Well, that's that's kind very kind of the ultimate Tiba, but for the moment, I'm not sure I'd play it. So, um, but thank you for the offer. Oops, a daisy. I'm not. Uh... Not concentrating. I got a black mark there. Never mind. Uh, okay. I definitely need to look at the specs. And my machine now is about five years old. Um, the main board's probably not so bad. Um, but the, uh, the graphics card's out of date these days. It was a really good card at the time. But that was at the time. <laughs> and uh, I, it has been far out past uh, now, I think. I can't actually remember, it's a, a Radeon 9800 series I believe off the top of my head but uh, it was it was at the time I bought it, I think the fastest card out there but uh, video cards don't stay the fastest anything for very long. Yeah. So 2.4 gig i7 um, in the uh, in the motherboard, so it would do uh, not do too bad with with that. And, uh, I think the motherboard will run a 3.4 gig uh, without overclocking. And I know I, can, I know in theory I can overclock this 2.4 to 4 gigs. But Steve Lord, good evening and welcome. Yeah. I tend not to, I tend to replace. Because by the time you've replaced, if you like, but by the time you've replaced your motherboard, your graphics card. Um, I don't know why I left, because I, I, don't, I don't bother with a sound card, just because I don't have a full four, uh, six point setup. I just don't like the wires all over the place. Um, so the, the sound cards aren't really worth it to me. So. By the time I've replaced a graphics card and a, um, I might as well have just built another one. All that's different is a, essentially is a case and power supply, so they're not that expensive. So I tend to sort of, I've got one, I'll build another, and then the, you know, that becomes the latest machine, and the other one will get repurposed for something for a short while before it gets shuffled off. down here a bit
We've got the other problem with. Uh... Okay, Ultimate Diva, have a good evening. Uh, have a good sleep. Enjoy your school tomorrow. <laughs> Nighty night. Now well, that's starting to look a bit better. Not bad. Um, still need something done around here. Okay.
Yeah, a lot of this now is just adjusting shade. I mean, the main sort of hair is all there. It's just some of it doesn't look right, doesn't look the right sort of shape. This area around here is now starting to work. This is still not bad, actually. Probably want a little bit more shading down, down around here. This is kind of shoulder, not quite front paw, but sort of a, a shoulder coming down towards the paw area. So um, there's a little bit of shading to do under under there and around here just to turn the corner a little bit because this is kind of like uh, his chest area and I'm doing something here where you can't see but You've got a kind of his chest area is just here, um, and then it, it's, it sort of curves around the body, and uh, sort of front paw is going to be down this sort of area here. So the way the lighting is, this is kind of correct, kind of. It's not quite. Uh, and I'm going to do a little bit more work just to bring that shadow down there a little bit, but. Uh, I think I need to round this off a bit. This area still isn't quite. It's almost, but not quite. Come back to that. Sometimes if I'm spending a lot of time in one place, I'll stop. And go do something something else because you can get very sort of fixated on one particular area. And you don't actually necessarily maintain a picture of the whole thing you're very focused on that one area you keep trying to do something and you lose the context of it in the rest of the image and when you get that to what you think it is you look at the rest and go oops actually that isn't right uh, and then you have to adjust the rest of the image around it so um, if I'm spending a lot of time on something like around that area there um, I'll go do something else right some other area. I mean, if I wasn't streaming this, I'd literally probably go do something else. Um, but uh, with streaming it, it's it's uh, uh, as good to just go and do a completely different area of the image.
Okay, that's tagged off nicely. And as you'd look at that, you can sort of see like a round. It sort of round comes up, comes sort of around here. I'm exaggerating, but the sort of that sort of look to it. It's not quite there yet, but it's close. Which um, is good, I think. I'm missing a little bit of um, colour down here. That'll do for the minute. I'm looking at this down at this bottom here, and in some ways it reminds me of sort of rain. When you're looking through a window, you see really thick, heavy falling rain, sort of slanted slightly. It kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Maybe this will be a good technique to use if I ever do a rainy scene. So basically, uh, any outside view in the UK. No, we're not actually that bad. <laughs> I know some people sometimes think we are, but... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I need to get a drink of water. Um, I still haven't quite got rid of the cold that I've got. It's just making, giving me a, a tickly throat sometimes, which makes me cough. <coughs> I thought the microphone wasn't that sensitive that uh, people with uh, headphones on were bothered by that. If uh, you were, I apologise, I'm sorry. just down here Thank you. The cream cake fairy arrived. So I now have something to look forward to shortly. And a bit more just in this sort of area here. These are really subtle changes in um, shading at this end was it's really difficult for me to actually see um, to see a lot of change I mean I can see the where I'm specifically working I can see the um, sort of the lines and the 
uh, slight colour changes I'm making uh, exactly where the pen is so I can see the effect of what I'm doing but um, in terms of the difference I've made in that area there it's really hard to see the difference but when I look on screen I can see it uh, this area here is a bit light there's a patch of light there which I don't really think I want so Actually, on, I mean, in, in the pocket at the back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not clear or well, Felix. Yeah. Clear. Yeah. I'm going into an office tomorrow, and I have uh, the the laptop that I use in a bag. And uh, Cleo is a female cat. Has found said bag and is curled up in it. Cats always find something like that. We've, I've had uh, Felix for the past two or three days curled up in, in my work's drawer. Uh, on my desk where I work, the drawer was open slightly and a couple of days ago he went and looked curled up in it and it's his favourite place at the moment. He goes and curls up in the drawer. He's a bit too wide when he curls up to actually shut the drawer. <laughs> Not that I'd do that anyway, but it's kind of like, you know, what's in your drawer? A cat. <laughs> But uh, cats, are, they're, they're notorious for trying to get into boxes. Even boxes that are too small. You, know, you might have a box, for example, that would literally fit this this cup in it. Or glass, whatever you want to call it. Um, as you can see, it's quite tall. But I, I almost guarantee if I put the box out that that came in, one of the cats would try to get into it. And they're probably trying stand in it so they could sit in it and curl up in it they're um i don't know what it is about boxes and cats if you buy a, if you buy a, a cat toy in a box they're more likely to pay with a box than the other toy i was working just in this area here yeah Of course, when they do that, they're, they're just being cute cats, but... <laughs> then occasionally they'll go something like uh, head first into a box like that and can't quite get the head out and that's when they start, you know, wandering around with a box on the head. And hence the subject of a lot of YouTube videos. Okay, that doesn't look so bad. That sort of looks right. That way. Um... I sort of see that. I probably want a bit more shading just underneath there. That's a little bit light, I think. 